Respiration is the overall exchange of gases among the atmosphere, the blood, and the cells. Respiration in land vertebrates, including as humans, consists of four phases. Breathing, which involves the act of taking in air in and out of the lungs. External respiration, which comprises the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the air and the blood within the lungs. Internal respiration, which involves the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the blood and body cells. And cellular respiration, which is the process of using oxygen to break down sugar, produce energy in the form of ATP in cells, and release carbon dioxide as waste product. The upper respiratory tract consists of the nose, nasal cavities, pharynx, and larynx. The air that we breathe in is inhaled through the nose and filtered through the nostrils. Coarse hair present in the nostrils traps large dust and dirt particles, which are then coated with mucus from the glands and nasal cavity. The warmed, moistened, and filtered air moves through a muscular tube in the upper throat, called the pharynx. The pharynx is a common passageway for food and air. It leads to two passageways called the esophagus, which leads to the digestive system, and the trachea, which leads to the respiratory system. There is also a structure called the epiglottis, a flap of tissue that opens and closes to allow entrance either to the digestive system or to the respiratory system. At the top of the trachea is a structure called the larynx, made up of two elastic ligaments or vocal cords which enable us to produce voice. Air rushing out of the lungs causes the vocal cords to vibrate and create sounds. The lower respiratory tract is composed of the trachea, the lungs, the alveoli, bronchi, and bronchioles. The trachea or the windpipe is the main passageway to the lungs. Due to the presence of the bands or rings of cartilage in the trachea, the trachea is flexible enough to keep the passageway open for air. As the air moves down into the trachea, its hair lining and mucus also trap dust particles and bacteria which are not filtered by the nose. The incoming air is now clean, moist, and warm, ready for its main destination. The lungs. The lungs are sponge-like organs located at the chest cavity, which are bounded on the sides by the ribs and at the bottom by the diaphragm. Although the lungs may seem symmetrical, they are not completely identical as the left lung is smaller than the right. The lungs are divided into sections called lobes, and if one lobe is injured or diseased, the other may still function normally. The lungs are also surrounded by a thin membrane called pleura, where its main function is to lessen friction by producing a fluid to lubricate the lungs when it expands during breathing. Before entering the lungs, the air reaches the trachea branching into two tubes, the left and the right bronchi, where the left bronchus leads to the left lung and similarly, the right bronchus leads to the right lung. These tubes continue to divide again and again, becoming narrower until they appear like very tiny tubes called bronchioles. At the end of the bronchioles are hundreds of round air sacs called the alveoli, which inflate during inhalation and deflate during exhalation. The alveoli serve as the site of respiration in the lungs where exchange of gases, oxygen, and carbon dioxide occurs. That ends our lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed learning with us. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification button. I'll see you in the next lesson.